10 out of 10 episode. I, I literally don't care. If you can at least admit that it was a good one, dislike this video and unsubscribe from my channel because this shit was some heat, bro. Like I did wake up pretty weak today, but after that episode, I, I, I just feel aggressive. Hell, if my dog looks at me funny, we might have problems. But anyways, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Chosen and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this week's episode review. Personally, I expected nothing less from this episode as this is still part of Kwaki's introduction. Last week, I also mentioned that even though we didn't get what most of us thought would be this week's episode, it was still vital as we did get parts and bits, I, I should say, of Kwaki's backstory. Plus, they put all the moolah into this one, clearly. This episode honestly brings me hope for future fights. Just like I said last week, I am personally avoiding rereading the chapter that the episode covers before I watch it to get the full experience, and I'm glad I made that move. But anyways, the intro is out of the way, so let's begin the review, and Boruto episode 189 begins exactly where we left off. And I mean exactly, because we start with the same scene we were presented with in the episode preview last week. Eventually, we do get to the ending of the actual episode where Kawaki and Gato are about to face off, and after that is just pure greatness. Right before the battle begins though, we are taken to Koji and Delta who observe what's going on. Delta asks Koji what he's trying to do about the Lee Shinobi as they clearly intend to take Kawaki back to the village. But Koji just tells her since she's here, they can figure something out together. But hey, Delta looking like a whole snack, I won't even lie. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> and now the battle begins. Gato and Kawaki go at it with some hand to machine combat. And the beginning portion when Kawaki flipped Gato, I was like, Damn, this kid can fight. Jigen taught him well, so I shouldn't be expecting anything less. Gato tries to shoot a projectile attack at Kawaki, who deflects it with his own weapon, which also breaks off. Just like we saw in the manga, Kawaki transforms his arm and throws pieces of it at Gato, meaning this transformation is in fact a long and close range attack that anime onlys now know. And then this is the part that had me kind of shook. The boy took more pieces out of his arm and attached them to his feet, which I assume not only makes him more agile, but also deals some pretty good damage if he gets close enough for a strike. Which is exactly what he did. The two go at it again with some taijutsu and Kwaki manages to stick the pieces he had on his feet to Gato's shoulders. And at this point, Kwaki is just giving him the works. Gato recovers and Kwaki charges at him, countlessly cutting him over and over again. Finally, Gato manages to get a hit in and headbutts Kwaki, knocking him back. Gato charges right for Kwaki, boosting himself with the gauntlet, which knocks him down, but thankfully he manages to get out of Gato's grasp. And the two are now face to face again. Gato mocks Kwaki, telling him that he hopes he's not done yet, but we then notice his face starts to turn red. I wonder why. Kwaki again takes a piece off his arm and uses it as a brass knuckle blade, kind of similar to Kanahamru's. The two charge at each other and it's just clash after clash. Kwaki manages to get small licks in, like a kick and whatnot, but it's obviously not doing anything. He then tries to throw more pieces at Garo's back, but this time, he just eats it. Kwaki tries to attack Garo, dealing whatever kind of damage he can, but for some reason again, it's having no effect. Like the man is just being completely disrespectful at this point. He takes a swing at Kwaki who dodges, but unfortunately, his top gets caught onto his gauntlet, who then gets thrown down to the ground. Garo then delivers a pretty good blow which sends Kwaki back. Kwaki now is clearly a bit doozy, probably still weak from his previous battle with the machines I assume. And because of this, he was just barely able to block Gato's projectile attack, which still even then knocks him down. Gato at this point is just being an asshole. He waits for Kwaki to get up just to suplex the kid who then throws him in the air. As Kwaki starts to wake, he grabs a small piece of his arm in last defense, and as he is falling, Gato intended to impale Kwaki but was stopped with that small piece. Kwaki recovers and tries to impale Gato with his own made blade. It was pretty confusing to see what happened here at first. I, I, I couldn't tell if Kwaki was just exhausted or if the blade didn't work. But based off of Gato mocking him a few times for being weaker than usual, I'm gonna go with him just not having enough energy to pierce through. Gato then pins Kwaki to the ground and picks him up, but we then notice that Gato's face has turned back to normal. If I'm not mistaken, I believe when he turns red, that puts him in a state of stronger durability. That or he's just batshit crazy. Boruto runs over to try and help Kwaki, but is then stopped by Kwaki. Konohamru, who I, I, I just gotta say, is it just me or does he look very similar to his style in the manga? Probably what they were going for. He tells Boruto that they must not pursue the threat as this is an S rank mission and if Boruto attacks Goro, he most likely won't be able to save him, letting down Naruto once again after they almost died to Deepa. We are then put back with Koji and Delta as she grows a bit furiated with Goro, telling him to be gentle and to be honest, I didn't remember Goro being this strong or even coming close to beating Kawaki. But then again, it has been a couple years since I've read this part in the manga. Obviously, the anime was going to extend this fight, do not get me wrong, but I mean, if I had to choose between him
him or Ao, at this point, it's clear who I choose. When he said Ao makes outers like him weak, he was not kidding. Goro then decides to break his limbs so that when he wakes, he won't go on the attack. Kind of reminds me of Kisume vs B when he tried to take out B's legs. And now comes the most badass part in the whole episode. Kawaki's trump card. As we see, his karma seal starts to glow rapidly until it stays a glowing red color. But this not only affects Kawaki, but Boruto as well, as his karma seal starts to not only hurt, but activate and so does Kwaki's. Goro, unfortunate enough for him, looks away at the wrong time, which gives room for Kwaki to completely blow up his left arm. This attack alone brought back the trauma Goro faced when Kwaki blew up his chin. He asks Kwaki where he got that power from, but Kwaki tells him that it's not his, which is why he hates it so much. I wonder whose it could be. He shoots at a projectile attack, but like the badass he is, Kwaki slowly starts walking over to Goro and absorbs each and every one he throws at him. At this point, I got Sasuke vs Sound Ninja vibes when the curse mark activated for the first time. I know the situation is completely different, but they just both feel the same and I was all for it. Goro from overusing the gauntlet starts to overheat which shuts down his ability to use projectiles. Kawaki in the fog with the karma seal outlined and glowing asks him if he's done yet. It is then that the center of the karma seal on the opposite side of Boruto and Kawaki's palm starts to glow. Goro at this point is just trembling in fear as nothing seems to work, but just then Kawaki's entire seal starts to rapidly glow again indicating that he's charging up for some Something. And on his other arm, he starts to transform again, but this time it seems different as it's glowing orange. Goro, completely helpless at this point, just looks at it in fear and can't bring himself to move as he just simply lets Kwaki wind back and strike him in the chest, expanding Kwaki's creation through Goro's chest. This kid is cold. But of course, since this is an anime, Goro can't die until the opponent leaves off with a badass line. He falls to his knees and spits out saliva from the attack, but honestly, I'm wondering why it wasn't blood. Kwaki puts his hands on Goro's face and brags that he warned him he'd lose more than his chin this time. And then Goro begins to beg for mercy. He starts breathing out uncontrollably and begins to start crying. Just, just for Kawaki to breathe it all in and tell him that his breath stinks like a pig and blows up the entire area. But of course, not Koji and Delta as that huge explosion didn't even phase them. I mean... Let's see how unfazed they are when they get into their big fight, am I right? Now with the show being called Boruto, of course we knew nothing was going to happen to them as Boruto unconsciously uses the Karma Seal to absorb the effect of the blast which saves the entire team. Kwaki was really gonna blow everyone up. After everything starts to become a bit more clear, half, yes half of Goro's body just got sent flying in. And in the middle of it all is of course Kwaki himself. I'm telling you guys, Sasuke vibes. Kwaki then calls out Boruto for lying about the Karma Seal since he clearly knew how to use it. Borto tells him that he doesn't and just wants to know what's going on. Kwaki tells Borto to return to the leaf and that if they continue to go after him, he'll kill them too. Koji then notices that the karma seals resonate with each other. When one awakens, the other is sure to follow. Kwaki's body, just like Deepa, starts to emit steam implying that he's overheating. A great detail that I'm happy they included with Deepa as it helps the anime onlys now understand why this is happening to him, which gets confirmed in just a bit. But before that, Delta asks Koji if she can now eliminate the leaf shinobi, but Koji OG has other plans. That instead, in time, he will capture back the vessel, but not until he gathers more intel. She warns Koji that Garo already spilled too much info, so this is a big risk he's taking. Although Koji tells her the moment the airship crashed, they were already compromised. And that eventually, in time, information to them will be pointless due to them lacking enough power to do anything about it. Now back to Boruto. He comments on how parts of Kawaki is most likely a scientific ninja tool, but Katasuke argues that he's more advanced than that. He claims that his entire body is a scientific ninja tool. Everything there is to Kawaki has been advanced by technology even further, even further than Naruto's artificial hand. You know, the hand made up of Hashidama cells. Boruto asks Katasuke if he's fixable, but apparently he's not. Mitsuki wonders if this scientist built him from scratch just like Orochimaru did with him, but Katasuke is quick to deny this, saying Mitsuki was created through genetic engineering as Kawaki was more so remodeled. The episode then ends with Boruto telling the team to take him back home to his father, and if you are a manga reader, you understood exactly why this scene was important foreshadowing. Like I said, this episode was a perfect 10 to me. I don't expect everyone to agree on that, but I think in terms of everything, when the music was supposed to be playing to when it wasn't, the animation was fluid, it wasn't stale, at times, the fight was extended, and you know, just, just a few things I can go on about. But that pretty much wraps up this arc, and we now begin with a new one. The arc has come to a close, and for the most part, I really did enjoy it. But as always, I want to know what you guys thought of Boruto episode 189. Some did say this episode was on par with episode 65, and I am very interested to hear what you all have to say about that. Thank you guys for watching all the way until the end, and I'll catch you on the next one.